So we're going to talk about how we developed a simulation-based mastery learning, a solid learning theory curriculum uh, to go along with the endoscopy training system, which uh, our group has been working to develop over the past, I think, six years or so. Um, it paralleled part of the development of, of FES and uh, show how this uh, learning strategy can be uh, implemented to prep for FES. Um, in the uh, effort to be fully transparent, um, I am a DOD employee, I'm active duty military. This was developed under a SAGES grant, which Dr. Trust mentioned, as well as a uh, collaborative research and development agreement with uh, my university, Henry Jackson Foundation, Limbs and Things in Kyoto. Uh, recently, Limbs and Things has purchased the licensing agreement, um, but I don't receive any personal compensation from that. Um, it's nice, I've had about six people do my background and intro for me, so we won't spend a whole lot of time on this. Uh, you know about the FEC. Um, some data presented on early fail rates uh, range between 25 and 40 percent, and this is in unprepped, you know, so people that didn't specifically prepare for this exam, um, but, uh, but had completed the case volume uh, requirements and sometimes in, in significant excess of the case volume requirements. Uh, and even that high percentage uh, reported there, which I think Amy Gardner is going to present at this meeting, um, those were folks going into MIS and GI surgery. So going into this exam uh, blind um, can be uh, potentially hazardous. We learned about FES and how uh, there was a strategic decision made early on to not allow practice on the individual modules uh, as part of a, a means to not drive people towards feeling obligated to purchase a virtual reality simulator. But again, uh, you know, how do we prep for this? Uh, Carmen showed data, talked a lot about using objective workplace assessment of uh, endoscopy to predict uh, FES uh, performance, which is a good way to go. Um, but again, requires uh, faculty to train on and use this clinical assessment tool. Well, we developed uh, what was previously called SCOPE, uh, Simulated Colonoscopy Objective Performance Evaluation, uh, and then uh, modified it as part of that research and development agreement to add a retroflexion task into what is now the ETS module. Uh, ETS is, comes in two physical forms. There's the straight model that you saw in Dr. Pearl's uh, talk uh, and is on the top there. And the first three tasks are contained within that platform. So there's a scope manipulation, a tool targeting, uh, and a retroflexion task. And the only real technology built into this uh, is some simple uh, electric circuits that set off some alarms and, and light up a light when you hold uh, the biopsy instrument in contact with one of the metal discs there for the required amount of time. The bottom, uh, the body form model uh, is uh, loop reduction and uh, mucosal inspection. And uh, the loop reduction is uh, pretty much uh, a minor modification of the previous Kyoto alpha loop model um, that some of you may be familiar with. So we started by uh, collecting some validity evidence on, on this platform as we developed it in terms of its ability to assess endoscopic skills. We showed that it could differentiate between uh, experience groups. We showed that it correlated well with the early colonoscopy learning curve and uh, that it correlates um, relatively well with FES score. So our hypothesis for this study was to see if we could use simulation-based mastery learning to develop a training curriculum using this platform that would produce uh, more encouraging FES pass rates than those uh, previously reported. So step one was to set the training goals for each of these tasks, and uh, this data is undergoing peer review separately currently, but essentially we took 11 experienced endoscopists, uh, gastroenterologists, colorectal surgeons, GI surgeons, uh, had them perform three trials of each task and, and their performance is reflected in that expert mean column. And then uh, we basically made a decision based, uh, guided by these expert means, what our uh, proficiency target was going to be for each of these tasks to try to make it doable and consistent with the, uh, the correlation data that we had. So you can see each one has allowable a, a time standard, allowable errors, and then a target and an overtraining component. And the overtraining component, you can see some require two consecutive achievements of the standard and some require some additional training. And those were the ones that correlated more tightly with, um, with FES and that we had uh, better performance data on. 
Um, so the demographics of our trainees, they were all PGY1s and 2s, uh, the majority PGY1s, uh, about 50% female, mostly right-hand dominant, and a very clinically inexperienced group. So the uh, median uh, um, endoscopy experience was zero across the board, even though towards the end of the study we did have some folks who, who were in that middle uh, experience range. So our methodology was a pre-training pre FES assessment followed by the uh, simulation-based mastery learning curriculum on the ETS platform using those goals that I showed you, and then a post-test uh, FES training assessment. Uh, you notice those numbers are a little weird. Two people were completely lost to follow-up. 14 completed some portion of the curriculum, uh, trained to proficiency on at least one task. One person showed up for pre-training assessment and showed up for post-training assessment and didn't really do anything in between. <laughs> so kind of like a little built-in mini control, uh, but uh, that's, that's the reality of what we had. So it took about 48 trials total across all the tasks. The number of training sessions, the instructions were to have training sessions last between an hour and an hour and a half, so somewhere around five to seven hours probably total training time. 71% uh, met at least the two consecutive performance target. Uh, a smaller percentage completed all the overtraining. Unclear if that was a misinterpretation of instructions or a failure to write it down on their sheet. Uh, but because of that, we did run a correlation between the number of tasks in which the expert standard was reached and the FES score, and that correlated moderately, showing that the more tasks you trained a proficiency on, the higher your score was. In terms of uh, pre- and post-test total score, you see uh, the difference there. Blue is pre-training, red is post, the black line is the FES passing score. As expected for an inexperienced group, you have an 18% pass rate on the pretest, and we had a 100% pass rate on the pretest. Those are the 14 that did the curriculum. The one person that did none of the curriculum but showed back up anyway did fail the, uh, the post-training assessment, but did improve a little bit. Uh, the effect size of that, given the tight standard deviation of the post-training assessment was 2.4. For those of you unfamiliar with effect size, usually an effect size of 0 0.8 is a, is a very strong effect size. So 2.4 is a significant effect on training. If we look at the improvement on each individual task, uh, the, the task numbers at the bottom re reference FES tasks. So all of them had statistically discernible improvement from pre-test, uh, pre-training to post-training, except for task four, which is mucosal inspection. Uh, there was improvement there, but uh, that did not uh, reach significance. Um, much like Dr. Mellinger showed, we wanted to benchmark this performance against some me you know, measurement. What was the kind of uh, endoscopy equivalent of this? So this is data that I'm actually presenting tomorrow on the initial uh, analysis of the FES uh, test skills exam, and you can see uh, the performance broken down by total endoscopy experience. So this is total uppers and lowers, uh, and you can see the performance groupings there and their pass rates. The pre-training assessment, uh, there's the FES passing score. The pre-training assessment group, as expected, fell well below the passing score and, and kind of in the middle of the 1 to 50 bandwidth. The post-training group, uh, though, was up here in the, uh, you know, pretty much exactly equivalent with the 151 to 300 endoscopy experience, but still within the, the error bars of the 300 plus group. Uh, so we felt confident uh, that that, you know, represented a replacement of a significant number of clinical endoscopies, at least as measured by FES. So in conclusion, it is feasible for even very novice learners uh, to use this ETS platform for training uh, in a reasonable amount of time. It does develop technical skills required to pass the FES manual skills exam. The post-training performance uh, as measured by FES is similar to approximately 300 endoscopies. And uh, this uh, should certainly be considered by program directors and other programs looking to develop either training or remediation strategies for flexible endoscopy skills. Thank you.